<clears throat> hey everybody, this is Gamery1014. Welcome back to more Let's Play of Sin and the Parable Alter the Locks. Before getting into the game... What say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Oh, of course. A three. Really. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion, you know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Here, would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Clearly there's something here that speaks to you. If I can be honest here, I really don't have any idea where I'm going with this. This whole third door thing was just a stab in the dark. But I guess you're into it, so let's keep this party train rowing. Here, based on that <laughs> real critical feedback here. Aha! You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? Well, it's instinct mostly. A calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. Here, based on the data from your previous... Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. Eight. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk got coming to a staircase. <coughs> <coughs> This is the... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had never known before. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. <laughs> That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. I don't want you.
No, no dialogue. Okay then. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. And I've done all those endings. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it.
You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... And that's it for that ending. I think that's the very first ending Slim Curry did in his Let's Play. <clears throat> now, let me go ahead and load this and reload it. Oh, it did it for me, yay. Holy crap. Damn it. A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started, and if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. <clears throat> I didn't remember the having to receive the or the game every time part. <clears throat> okay, so now it's The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. Wait, Stanley thought to himself, am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Interesting. Hmm. Holy crap, I turned around. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office.
all of his co-workers were gone, what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. And the fire engineer is actually the one who Since the last one is Sans computer, that must mean you can't frickin' use the bucket for this ending then. Because once you exit the room, you can't re-enter it, so must be, this must be an ending you can't do with the bucket. Maybe get something for pinning all the buttons. And then eventually turn it back on. Really, you can switch them on and off both. Maybe just turn back on and it's on that and realize it. Yeah, I think they only stay temporarily on. Yep. I seen another one with those dark turn back. Yeah. Okay, so just like in the original version, you do actually have to get out because it never actually ends itself. I kind of figured that was the case, but I wanted confirmation on that. His co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Ah, then in that case we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? 
Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Will it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. No, it doesn't. The other option is even Hardly longer. Any. How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well, now, I disagree. I built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Well, I hope I'm correct and assuming that you had to restart for this too, just like the Stanley to Heaven ending. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two. Stupid thing. Curse you, RNG. Really? Are you kidding me? It's gonna make me play this. Okay. Just got two bad rolls and a walk. Well, why I got two bad rolls in a row, too. Interesting that it's giving me the awaiting input. Maybe that's remaining because I haven't completed, actually completed an ending because you have to restart both the Stanley to Heaven and Window endings. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself, and constantly needed support and guidance from <laughs> others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I have to wonder if in the original game as well as how uh, that uh, with the uh, phone in the farm is how you got the jump button disable achievement or if I just managed to get extremely lucky with getting that achievement. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game like structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just restart the game any old time you want. Like, right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. There was
once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way. But his brain had long ceased to function. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. You too will become quite unbearable. This music, like the da 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 part, certain sounds at least somewhat reminiscent of the Super Mario Bros. Underwater theme slash Super Mario 64 slider theme. Hey, the music eventually stops. It still seems like you do have to restart it though on your own, but the music does stop at a point. Okay, so anyway. <clears throat> Not counting the bucket ending, is I've got two endings left. <clears throat> Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Stanley's bucket, the only <laughs> co-worker he would ever truly need. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door and his... Also, I just realized I don't want the bucket. I screwed up. Glad I caught myself on that. <laughs> How wonderful. Stanley was alone. <laughs> Finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what I wanted.
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. And here it was, the lounge. What a room, Stanley thought to himself. What a room, what a room, what a room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. <coughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. My bucket, anyway. About. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To oh, no, 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 you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly? I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. No. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instruction video choice it's the best part of being a real person but if used incorrectly can also be the most dangerous interesting just like the so I forgot to mention this just like the song and the window ending did not originally have captions for it this did not originally have captions for it either for example in this scenario a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice he could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. <laughs> or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? They freaking changed this. This is not how it was originally. <laughs> Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that, that does sense. not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Now this part was kept intact. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? <laughs> and finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. 
there was something about in the original about like kids and the promised her, her, her world nations or whatever. And I think it was something like the guy who had, had like some sort of kid from her world country, get like like King as an example, and had like a cigarette or something, and like had a lighter, and then the, it said so much of the stuff, and then the next thing was him setting the kid on fire and. <laughs> All things considered, they had to change that, considering 2022. <laughs> Even though you can still get the original version of the game I see in Steam and still see that as well, of course, older Let's Plays. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But yeah, if they didn't change that, they would have caught flack. They had to change that. <clears throat> But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Now, for this, so you can get both of the endings in this part and don't have to redo it, you want to uh, disobey the narrator at first. You guys will see how it's going to be when we get to that point. See what I mean? Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Interesting thing, it has you going backwards from how you normally, because normally you go this way from this way, but you're going backwards now. <clears throat> you're not alive, you're lying right now, stop. I know that was there originally, because I remember Slim Curry reading it, but it's still funny. there, you'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. But I want to stop and admire the lounge. It's the best room in the game. Well, second best. The best room in the game is the broom closet. <laughs> Remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Interesting. In the original of the text on screen, they actually had text for him clearing his throat. It was a hem in parentheses. A-H-E-M or E-H-M. How are spelled with exclamation point in parentheses. They removed that from this version. Very interesting. Random change, but whatever. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. I don't want to hurry. I'll take my time. And I'll do it while crouching, because I can. Hear the Mario 64 Princess Peach's castle music. <clears throat> oh, it's ruined. You... I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? 
To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? <laughs> Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. <laughs> that thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you you're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to be... <clears throat> ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This is what happens after that previous thing when you enter the wrong door. No! no! Why did you do that? Did you do that? Quickly, hurry up. Behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. Yeah, he's in problem. Behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <clears throat> Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I'm curious. Looks like he doesn't let you do it. Stepping inside his manager's office, nope. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. 
He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver, otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Okay, fine, you're not gonna do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Interesting it says multiple Stanley, walks and not to... The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. <laughs> Sorry, Leroy. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Unless I am mistaken, and there's anything that I missed, that's all the of the endings from the original game that are still in, within the deluxe version of the game. Is there like two or three they had to cut out? The uh, serious room ending for enter, trying to enter a cheat code. There was, of course, this is still the same ending, but my playing being mine instead of the open world game, and then. Uh, Rocket League originally the game his ending had Minecraft and Portal and uh and uh, any other things I can't think of right now. <laughs> anyway, that's it for all the game the endings or in the original version they're still in the Lux version. Of course there's still plenty of stuff left to do with the same endings with the bucket, but I'm not gonna be doing those for a while. You guys will probably see the nice one in a couple weeks after this one, but for me it'll be a while before I get to recording the bucket endings and anything else the Lux version has to offer new. So that said guys, that's it for this video. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I having it be a liar because it's the last one of the original er, endings from the original game. And I'll see you guys next time for let's play the Stanley Parable Ultra Lux. Bye everybody. <laughs>